welcome to beautiful Wanneroo Park Raceway in Western Australia. Today, the penultimate round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Well, Wanneroo has been a fairly happy haven for the past few years for Ford Sierras, and not a lot has changed this weekend. I'm sure Alan Moffat will agree that the Ford Sierras look very much the car to beat here, and John Bow in particular. Yes, well, he's had five pole positions so far in the series, Mike. Uh, I think uh, not to be discounted, look out for those GTRs. They're uh, out of the top six at the moment, but they'll come through in that second heat. Well, of course, in points today, let's take a look at the championship points table lead. 190 points shows Mark Scaife as the leader from 160, his teammate Jimmy Richards. Then on 141, no baloney Tony Longhurst in the BMW. And right behind him, Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson Sierra. And as you can see, John Bow, the Shell Sierra, starts off pole position with Wayne Park, the Peter Jackson Sierra, alongside Dickie Johnson in the Shell Sierra, starts out of position three. Tony Longhurst, the Benson and Hedges BMW from four and from 5.30, Glenn Seaton. That's a long 10 seconds. Everyone's getting edgy. Go. Bow pulls the right gear, gets off the line. There goes Jimmy Richards down the outside as Wayne Park lights up the tyres and Alan Jones gets a shocker of a start out on the grass as they head into the first turn, the right-hander. And as they head out of there, you'll find it's the two Shell Sierras with John Bow, the race leader, Dickie Johnson, up into second spot. And I think Glenn Seaton back in the pack just a little bit. Wayne Park looking to pick up third spot. But right behind him is Jimmy Richards. He's making the big moves, and Larry Perkins in the Castrol Commodore sits one back behind them. Uh, brakes are very important here at the end of that main straight, Mike. It's a 90-degree corner. It's been widened a little bit over the years, but nevertheless, the cars have got to pull up at the end of that straight. And I think, uh, Glenn, as they hit the 7,500 RPM uh, pop-off, you can hear that explosion there. Now he's forced to tuck in behind. Well, the GTR will be feeling their, uh, their weight here today. And, uh, yes, feeling a bit more of their way around. Everyone appreciates the uh, that ride underneath the car. And one person who wrote it, no, there is not a cameraman underneath. <laughs> <laughs> so John Bow opens up the lead. Four seconds over his teammate Dick Johnson. And Dick, in turn, has about a five-second lead over this battle here. So there it is. As we join Dick on the flight deck, what a day so far. One, two, pal. Yeah, so far, Mike, so far. How the tyres feel? Well, they're getting a little bit breezy, but I'm trying to look after them enough so I've got enough for the next race too. Look at this. Scaife having a look down the inside of Park's car. Park's got some loose bodywork, it seems, at the back. They're all starting to lean on each other a bit, getting a bit desperate. There's Longhurst up the inside of Scaife. Scaife's been left high and dry. Yeah, they boxed him in there nicely, and he can't get by now. And here comes Alan Jones. He's got the nice line into this corner. He'll go deep under brakes. Scaife gets pushed even wider. Thank you very much. Yes. He's I lost can't... two positions in the length of the straight to the little BMWs. A remarkable feat. Tony was very uh, sporting there. He could have dived in uh, oh, under brakes. Go, Tony. He's having it another go now. That little wiggle on the approach to where the cars are right now is uh, quite distinct. And we saw Jim Richards pass there before, and obviously uh, Tony said, I'll take advantage there as well. Thank you very much. Here's Alan Jones having a bit of a think. He might lunge down. No. Escape not to be outdone, wants to get a little bit of ground gathered back up, but... Uh, not finding it so easy. And he's going to have to go the outside. There's no way. Jones, oh, no. It's a trivial force play there, and the four-wheel drive advantage is snapping off that turn have played well into the hands of Mark Scaife again. Jones had it all set up, but here he comes again down on the inside. Scaife tries to cover his ground. No. Jones <laughs> says, sorry, pal. Back you go again. Now he's got to try and get <laughs> straight across the inside of the track. So Alan Jones is doing a bit of defensive driving. Just look how well Jonesy hung on to Scape as they came out of the loop. It's a big, long haul up that hill. The GTR with more power and certainly much more traction. And Jonesy was right with him as they came over the top of the hill. That is really impressive. But the Sierra is back for its final season of competition. Last turn comes up. Checkered flag at the ready for heat number one. Round number eight. And it goes to John Bow and car number 18. And strike up a one-two for the Shell Sierra team. Dickie Johnson finishes in second. Huge crowd uh, cheer coming up for that one, and Jimmy Richards coming up for third place. Settle back, time to go racing from Wanneroo Park Raceway. Red light. Bow just creeps marginally. Johnson bobbled it at the start badly, ever so badly, and Glenn Seaton shifts ground. Almost tacks onto the back of uh, Dick Johnson's car. That was a shocker from Dick Johnson. But as they make it through turn number one and the exit now to Dunlop Corner, 
You'll find it's John Bauer, and right behind him, it'll be Jimmy Richards. Next is Dick Johnson, the second of the Nissans, and then Tony Longhurst, Longhurst up very, very closely behind uh, Glenn Seaton. So they go through the sweeper and now start to work the downhill section to the right-hander. And I think you'll find that the Nissan is well and truly on some trailblazing action here today. It's a good start from uh, Jimmy Richards, but that was made even easier by a terrible start on the part of Dick Johnson, and Scaife is already up to fourth and putting pressure on the Queenslander. Also a great start from Mark Scaife. He leapt off the fourth or fifth row there, pushed his way up through the field. There he is in fourth place behind Johnson. Johnson only just grappling up to third position after Mike said that terrible start. But there's Jim Richards, second. So the Nissan's really taking the fight up to the Sierras in heat two. Yeah, Scaife's not fooling around either. Now he's just shadowing Dick Johnson. I think you're going to find this is going to be a real scrap in this heat. Everybody's uh, monitored what they did with their tires in the first round. And uh, now they know it's uh, go for broke. There's no prizes for coming nowhere in this one. And you can see uh, Scaife being much more aggressive than what we witnessed in the first heat. Wayne Park in the pits. Obvious engine worries with the bonnet open. And uh, we now have a situation where Tony Longhurst is giving Seaton the same treatin treatment he normally reserves for John Bow. <laughs> 2.91 seconds the gap from uh, our race leader John Bow back to uh, Jimmy Richards and Mark Scaife. Alan Jones shadowing Tony Longhurst, the two little Benson and Hedges cars running like tops. BMW reliability. They, I don't believe, have uh, missed a beat all this season. Tremendous credit to their preparation and the oh, engineering wow. that goes in that team. Take Try that sometime when you're driving down Swanson Street, well, which we can't do anymore, but shall we say Pitt Street, Mike? Yeah. we want? Parramatta it's, Road? It's close, isn't it? Look at the speed of this BMW out of that corner. That is remarkable how quickly it gets up the hill. You see uh, Seaton guarding every inch of the road. Seems to be rubbing a tyre there. Smoke coming off the... I tell you what, when they make their lunch here, it's going to be two for one. He's basically got it. Oh, oh he is. He's rubbing, rubbing a tyre. He's had it. So That'll be hurting him. See on our Castrol race cam last time around, you got very, very close to the back of Seaton's car. I don't know whether they touched. Seaton now has bodywork rubbing on his left rear tyre. Isn't that a fabulous shot? Now he rubs the bodywork there, and when he gets the car straight... Tony will be breathing these fumes. It's hard enough putting up with the fumes that come out of your into your own cockpit, but when you've got to put up with somebody else's as well, it can be quite toxic. And it's Tony Longhurst finding a little inside edge here on um, Glenn Seaton, car number 30, the Peter Jackson Sierra. And that was the only invitation teammate Alan Jones needed. They're able to perpetrate a one-two straight through on the inside. Glenn had been rubbing a tyre the last couple of laps. But now they've been able to get through. So whether Tony Longhurst can go on with it from here, only time will tell. At 2.5 seconds, the gap at it uh, already as they get one of the uh, the Alfa Bagello cars out of the way and head up the hill again. Bow tries to consolidate, but I'll tell you, right behind Dick Johnson, Tony Longhurst is Storm and Norman. <laughs> And as we take Dunlop race cam, just guess who is sitting in behind Dickie Johnson? Tony Longhurst! zippity doo -da. Up on the inside with the Dunlop race cam. And away goes Tony. And don't tell me he's not the mover in the field. That really did catch Johnson. JB's got uh, not much he can do about it if he's uh, out of tyres. We'll have to wait and see as they come down the hill. Won't want to lock the brakes up now slide right off the circuit. And we have seen situations, uh, particularly Winton, when Longhurst was all over the back of Bow, he just managed to hang on lap after lap after lap. I wonder if he can produce that same sort of durability this time. I well, it's hard to do that on bicycle tyres with this one. And Dick is skating around just a little bit. The exit to that turn, now you'll see that uh, Gibbs will try and get up the inside. Three laps to go. Whoop, there goes Mark Scaife. Down just at the, the end of the straight. The crowd reacting below us here. There it is. Deary Mark Scaife, he's just come off at the most unusual spot, just beyond the pit entry lane. And they're all going to get Scaife. His championship is sitting there. Scaife has gone off at the end near the edge of the sand trap and the e entrance to the pits. He's trying to pick up reverse gear with those big racing tyres. He hasn't got a lot of lock that he can wind on, so he's trying to squeeze through. And meanwhile, the battle here, 
Johnson trying Look to hold this. up this gaggle. Glenn Seaton goes up the inside. There is a touch for sure. Oh, oh, there we go. More than a touch. touch. There They're all over the, the place. Johnson goes off into the dust. Jet Johnson trying to catch first gear if he can and get out of there. So all of a sudden, all hell's broken loose. Scaife, he seems to have vanished. Don't know where he's, he's got, got into to. the pits. There he is. He's gone into the pits, but this is going to get away from him. He couldn't believe this. It was all set up for the championship. But at this stage, two laps to go. And here's the man that's going to spoil the Nissan birthday. It's uh, John Bauer coming down the front straight. Jim Richards is nailed back about another car length. And he knows uh, what's on now. Richards, Richards knows that if he can get up and, uh, and get past John Bauer here, because Scaife is now out of the equation. There goes Mark Scaife, a lengthy pit stop. He's going to come in and finish last today. He's been lapped by the whole field, so Scaife is out of the equation. Here's the battle for the lead and the win of the day. John Bow and Jim Richards locked in battle. One oh, here he comes. Here's the move down the inside. Now, this really is a remarkable performance from Bow. He's done a number of rounds before. Get set, John. Here it comes. The challenge on the inside. Try and get back to the inside. That's what he'll have to do because Jim, with a lap and a quarter to go. Well, that's Bowers' trump card. He has got that straight line speed coming up the hill. But he He's... can't do anything foolish. He can't float it in and get the tail loose on the car. Last lap. Here comes Bow. Richards getting sideways, bouncing off the curbs. He's trying everything that he knows to get past Bow here. And if John can withstand the pressure on this last 2.4 kilometres, there's the last lap board. Yes, we know that. We get back to uh, oh, the tricky goes up the inside. Oh, the tricky Bang, bit. touch, Not touch, quite. touch, touch. Whoa. Crowd is standing and screaming here at Wanneroo Park. Now, that's, that's make sure he hasn't folded uh, one of those fenders over a tyre. That's not Jim's uh, way of driving <laughs> anyway. That was just a racing incident, but he's going to come down the inside of our here. And I think Jim maybe have even caught a tyre. Let's wait and see. This is a dramatic penultimate round of the Shell Touring Car Championship. Bow just feathering it through here. Get it straight. Bring on the power. And bring it up the hill because Richards is go. sitting alongside and Bow's trying to get down the inside. There it is. That's his trump card. That extra power. He's got Richards covered as they come down to the breaking point for the last time. Here's Jim Richards going to haul it on on the inside. Or can John Bow keep it straight? He's got to get back to the go. inside. Richards gets the power on. He's got go. a guard alongside. There's a crowd to the line. The Hit crowd's the going crazy. Bow wins it. That has Tremendous. ruined the Nissan challenge at Wanneroo Park because John Bowers won both ends of round eight of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. Second spot will go to Jimmy Richards. Fabulous drive from Richards. Forget that little touch of cars. That's not Jimmy's style of driving. And Tony Longhurst will pick up third place and the crowd have gone nuts he loved that. at Wanneroo Park this afternoon. It was a great uh, great day for all our guys. The, the Shell team uh, have done a tremendous job this year and Dunlop have done a great job with the tyres. And uh, it's a pleasure to race with a gentleman such as Jim.